Hey, this is Craig the Pool Man with Pool Specialist, and today we're going to demonstrate how to assemble what we refer to as a power in. That means you've got a motor, and we're now going to create a mechanism to put that onto the back of your pump. My recommendation is you build the whole power end, which would be using the back plate, and then a new impeller, a new diffuser, and therefore everything's new, nothing is worn. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put in what was referred to as a mechanical seal. It is used to be called a ceramic seal because this part was ceramic and this part was ceramic. And what's very imperative is that the shiny side goes to the shiny side. It's got to be so that it's got a very smooth, seamless type of movement. You'll notice the back side is rubber on this, the back side is rubber on that as well. So if you put rubber to rubber, of course, that wouldn't work very good and burn out. So shiny to shiny. First thing we're going to do is put this in the back plate. And I always like to take a little bit of dish detergent, put it around it, and that way it will fit very easily into the hole that's intended for in the bottom. And you want to make sure that that gets pushed all the way in and is completely flat all around. So you can see that that's level in the front take a look at the back and make sure that it's level in the back because if it isn't flat then you're going to have a gap and of course this is going to leak. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put our back plate on the motor. So it should only fit on in one direction. Most of it should be labeled top and if you look right here there's this tiny little label that says top. Sometimes it's there, sometimes it's there, sometimes it's on the front. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to put this on. And then, easiest to just set it like this. And then we're going to put our bolts in. So we're going to line them up. And we're going to thread them in by hand first. Always, always, always thread your bolts in by hand. Never use a wrench or a socket set because your chances of stripping them is pretty good. Sometimes there's washers that have to go in between the bolts and the motor. In this case we don't have it. So once we have them threaded then we're going to take a socket set And go ahead and tighten all our bolts around the whole motor. Then go round robin just to make sure they're all snug. They don't have to be super tight, but you definitely want them tight. Now that you've got that done, pop the motor back up. And now we're going to put our second seal on. Again, remember shiny side the shiny side. So that shiny side has to go towards the other shiny side. Again, using a little bit of Dawn or dish detergent to just get that positioned on there is a good idea. Next, we want to take our impeller. This is actually what's doing all the work and that is going to screw on to our shaft. Again, thread it by hand. When you get to a certain point, the shaft is going to turn. And then what happens is there is something on the back of the pump that you will have to hold. In this particular pump, you take a quarter inch Allen wrench and you insert it into the hole. And you, that will move the shaft. So I will have to then hold that while I'm tightening this impeller. 
tighten it by hand and then get yourself a pair of channel locks don't go cranking down on this because you don't want to scar the impeller but you definitely want to make sure that it's tight okay there's a second locking mechanism on the pump which is a reverse thread screw and that's going to go into the center of the impeller you'll notice that it actually has Loctite on it so if you happen to reuse this screw go ahead and get yourself some red Loctite and put new Loctite on it just so that that screw can't move out and again this is reverse thread so normally you're going to go clockwise to thread it in if you were righty tighty but this righty tighty lefty loosey this one is turn to the left in order to thread it in. Once you get it hand threaded then again you're going to take your socket set and you're going to turn that and as you're turning this you're holding that wrench on the back of the motor so that the shaft or cannot spin. You're going to hold it, tighten it up Again, it doesn't have to be super tight, but you want it tight enough where it's not going to back off. The whole purpose of this is, of course, as it spins, it's going to spin in this direction, and you don't want it to loosen up as it's spinning. And then when the pump stops, a lot of times there's something called a reverse water hammer that's going to come and try and spin the impeller in the reverse direction and so you don't want it loosening up so you're tightening up the impeller on the shaft in one direction and then using a screw to completely lock it in place in the other direction and that is why it's imperative that they both be fairly tight once we get to that point then we have our diffuser which goes over this and again the diffuser has a top and a bottom it's keyed so that it will not allow you to put it on wrong. So if you try to put it in in the wrong direction, it just simply will not line up. So once it lines up, you know you're in the right direction. There are typically two or three screws that are used, and again, these screws have Loctite on them. So you're going to go ahead, put those in place, start threading them in, take a nut driver, tighten them up again you want them tight but if you make it too tight you're liable to strip it or actually snap the screw that's why I wouldn't use a ratchet with this I would use a nut driver finally what you're going to do is put in your new diffuser o-ring and this should be a tight fit around your diffuser and as you go to push this into the pump again you're going to want to take some dish detergent and put it on that gasket so that it slides into the pump and doesn't bind up lastly you have a body o-ring and although I wouldn't put it on the shop I would just keep it in the package and tape it to your power end until you get out to your job. Once you get out to your job, now you're ready to rock and roll. All you have to do is unbolt your old power end, one, one, two, three, four, disconnect your wiring to this, disconnect your bonding lug, and pull the old power end off and put your new power end on. That is as simple as it gets. 
every pump has a different way to hold your your armature or your shaft sometimes it's an allen wrench sometimes it's a wrench different sizes but it is there on the back of the pump if you enjoyed this drop us a like thank you very much for watching and have a great day